Hey everybody, welcome to Repeats. We are in week five, so we are starting a new round of repeats today. We have our three to five day. So it means heavy. We really want to try to keep our reps anywhere from three to five. We're gonna do three to five reps for three to five sets. And we have three to five exercises. Uh, good old Dr. Andy Galpin um, formatting here. So I have us at five exercises today. And today is gonna be a little bit of an experiment in what weight I want to use for each of the exercises. So I'll tell you what we're going to be doing and then I'll tell you um, the weight selection that I grabbed to start. And then obviously I have some things on the ready. Um, I was a little lazy and didn't bring the 40s or 45s out of the car. So I am stuck with a set of 50s, 30s, 35s. Um, I'm going to use the 35 pound kettlebells I think for my chest press. And then um, for an overhead pull, my plan is to use the 35, at least the first set, and then I may transition up to my 20 kilo kettlebell um, for the second set. So we have a chest press, a box row, so if you have a bench or a box or something to support yourself on, even a bar, um, you know, just anything that'll give you some sort of support would be great. Um, uh, deadlift. You could do single leg deadlift. It's a little bit easier to find, depending on what you have access to. If you don't have a bar or a hex bar or super, he super heavy weights, you could do a single leg deadlift. Um, I'm not gonna put that load on my one leg um, right now. I'm gonna do a regular deadlift, an overhead press, so standing shoulder press, and then an overhead pull. So we wanna make sure that we're nice and warmed up. In fact, um, let's have a set of 15s on the ready and we'll go through one round at a lighter uh, repetition. We'll do, we'll do uh, 10 reps per, per exercise. So hinge over those legs, just drive yourself to one side and then the other. Take a couple deep breaths. I think it's always important to just center yourself, gear up, be prepared, check in, notice how things are going. How are you mentally, physically, emotionally, sometimes when things are going on in the back of our minds, it's hard to get present, but I also think that exercise, especially uh, pretty heavy exercise or difficult, can be really good opportunity to get out of our head and to get off of things that are maybe stressing us out or causing anxiety and just help us to focus on the work, focus on the load. So let's go ahead and drop down into our child's pose, big toes together. Knees nice and wide, sit your hips back and down, reaching the arms forward, take a deep inhale, and then an exhale. Again, deep inhale, and exhale. All right, go ahead and bring yourself up. We're gonna do something a little funky. Bring your right knee to the middle, cross your left knee behind it, open your feet out wide, and then just sit back, that's your inhale. Exhale, come forward, stretch through those forearms. We're going to be doing gripping on heavy load today. So you want to get those forearms ready to go, making sure that we're keeping elbows and joints and everything nice and happy. A good little stretch and opening for the low back here. Okay, switch your sides. So now our left knee is in the middle, right knee crosses behind. Open your feet apart, hinge back, stretch forward, hinge back, and stretch forward. All right, set up into those hands and knees position, spread fingers nice and wide, and then pull the chest forward between the thumbs, stretching through those forearms. Gentle contraction on your core. Slide back, we're gonna turn our fingertips around to point at the knees, bend one elbow and then the other. Hopefully your joints are staying happy and healthy along the way, watching out for overuse injuries. Of course, we don't want acute injuries either, but in my head, sometimes acute injuries are, are hard to work around or make sure that you never hit up. Point your palm up and rotate the elbow in and out, and then the other side. But overuse injuries, we can definitely manage and keep track of them. We have control over, so be conscious of what you're doing, what's going on. Okay, push your fingers back forward, way far in the front of your mat, curl the toes under, drive your hips up and back. Set up for that down dog. Go ahead and make whatever little shifts and adjustments you need. Pedal out your feet, then one knee, then the other. Sink your shoulder blades down the back. Pull the pubic bone up and draw the belly button back. 
Feel the spine lengthen, but staying neutral. So try not to lose the low back. Make sure it's not overarching. Make sure your upper back is not rounding. So this should be butt super high in the air. A whole downward facing dog, not a poorly formed plank. So if you're really tight in the hamstrings, don't push so far um, with your heels to the ground and let your knees bend. So your heels can come up, the knees can bend, give you a little more space in the hamstrings. My hamstrings are definitely a little sore from all those kettlebell swings yesterday. Come forward, hold your plank position. Take a couple deep inhales and exhales. <sighs> Allow yourself time to get geared up for our heavy loads. Rotate your hips to the right. Let them drop down. Nice stretch through the lats, the side of the back. Come back to center, reset. <sighs> Inhale and then exhale. Rotate your feet to the left and let your hips drop down there. Perfect. And come back up. <clears throat> all right. Drive those hips up, walk your feet to the hands, grab your elbows, bounce a second. So let's grab those 15 pound dumbbells and we're gonna go through our little warm up round and then we'll get our heavy load. So we'll hit a full 10 reps, chest press, box row, deadlift, overhead press and overhead pull. All right, remember core, strong for everything. That's our foundation, that's our setup. Here we go, 10, press right over the chest. Nine. Check in, where are the wrists? This is a good opportunity to make sure the shoulders are ready to go, the back. And one, all right. Go ahead and bring your body up and we're gonna head to our box. And then I am actually going to be <laughs> flipping myself around. So my butt's going to be facing you eventually, but it's okay. Save on some time. Now remember, you want the back to do the work here, squaring off the hips, even weight distribution between your knee and hand. And also remember, maybe you don't have access to heavy weights, so maybe you're going to hit up 15 reps, 20 reps, who knows. You find your measure and ability and what you have access for for your progressive overload. <clears throat> also remember, when you go heavier weights, you're going to have more time that you need to take between your sets. So if we were really doing our three to five day right, we'd hit three to five minutes, maybe not three, probably one to two between. So we'll see within reason. Three, two, and one. Okay. Dead lifts. Shoulders back and down. Find your neutral spine. Four corners of the feet. Keep that neutral spine as you hinge forward and press up. Feel those hamstrings that we got worked yesterday. Core engages. Depending on your flexibility, you do not need to go super low. If you find that your deadlift gets into your low back, then maybe don't go so deep. And you can also try widening out through your base. This round is ish, 10-ish. <laughs> All right, overhead press. Make sure those shoulders feel good. Three, two, one. And then our overhead pull. Low back stays really connected to the ground. Low ribs are pulling in. So it's important to go heavy, to lift heavy, to really push the body, to have to use a lot of flexion and a lot of contraction throughout your entire 
trunk and thighs, building that base of support. Whole body ends up having to hold load, not just the muscles that you're working. But depending on where you're at and what's going on, heavy may not be your best option. So feel free to go lighter weight and heavier reps. All right. Perfect job. There's our little warm up set. Place your hands behind, fingertips point towards your glutes, open the chest, stretch your shoulders. And then we're going to get going on a real set, starting with that chest press. I'm going to use my kettlebells. If you use kettlebells, it is a fun little change up. It's very different. I may not even get one here. Who knows? I did not uh, trial before I pushed record. You guys get to see me in my bra form. Oh. I know I can do a 35-pound dumbbell press. Kettlebells are different. Here we go. Three to five. Focus on the move. Bracing. All right. There we go. Chest press is done. Moving on to our box row. I'm going to use my 50 here, hopefully. <clears throat> Making sure you're set and ready. So like I said, maybe you transition faster. Maybe you can run straight into your next set a little quicker, depending on what what size weight you have access to. Squaring off the hips, shoulders, use your back. Keeping your low back stable and the rotation comes from the mid back. All right, I started on the stronger side, so hopefully we can meet up with the weaker side. Make sure you're not compensating to force the load. Keep good form. All right. Take a little second. And next up, we'll have those deadlifts. Good opportunity to build grip. Let's take a yogi squat here. Nice and deep. Open up the hips before we get going. All right, so the load is held through the legs, the glutes, the core, and the upper back. Lengthen the spine, opening the chest, strengthening those legs. Nice job. Five. So definitely could use some heavier weight there. That's okay. For today, good start off point. Bend one knee. Get your hips leveled. Extend your other leg forward. Other side. All right, shoulder press, overhead press is next. You jump on in if you're ready to go. 
Three to five. Four nice and strong. Good base of support. And our overhead pull. All right, I'm gonna use my kettlebell here. So if you're using a kettlebell, hold on the horns, butts up on the kettlebell, not your butt. Hold the low belly down. Grab tight underneath that rib cage. So you are not allowed to let your rib cage pop. And you need to flex into the upper back. So the load is not hitting. Your low back. So you got it in the core. Flex into your upper back so the load's not hitting the shoulders, and the neck. All right, five, beautiful. All right, let's hit a pelvic rotation stretch. This is good for those of us that like our high intensity hit days. It's a different type of intensity. Cross your left ankle over the right knee. Make sure that you can see the outside of that right foot and rotate over. See if you can get your left foot on the ground and then pull the left knee away from the hips. Bring it in. Switch it up, other side. Right leg crosses. Make sure that left leg is out wide enough and then rotate over. Super good on that low back, outside of the glute. Roll in. All right, let's hit three dead bugs per side. Pack in, contract and extend. One. Two. Three. All right, here we go. Back at it, we're gonna hit up that chest press. Three to five reps, this is our second set. Hardest part of this, bringing them up. Brace in. Keep in mind what we're targeting. Those pecs. Rolling the shoulders back. Five, I think. Whew. Reach those arms back. Okay, for our box row, I'm gonna be hitting up my left side first this time. Check in, make sure everything's feeling good. Remember, it's about keeping the body healthy, keeping form. We hit chest, now we get our antagonist with back muscles. Three to five. With good form, good focus. Okay, other side. Three, four. Flex across that upper back. 
to support the shoulders, and then you pull with that lat. All right. Good lifts. Feel those lats. They're working hard to brace today, so make sure it's the lats and the core, not your low back. Keep that pelvis nice and neutral. That's why we took that time to do our pelvic twist. All right, here we go. Pack your upper back. Find even weight distribution through the legs. Overhead press is next. Three to five. Braced core. Pressing through the back into the shoulders. Almost didn't get that last one. All right. Elbows to knees, open the chest and round. Open and round. All right, overhead pull. I liked my 35. Took a lot of focus to keep those arms straight and ribs pulled in. Find that upper back. <sighs> Set those shoulder blades in. <sighs> Five. <clears throat> All right. Same, pelvic rotation, stretch. Left ankle over the right knee, rotate out. Grab the core, roll in, other side. Very different, three to five. Just a little notice on my own. See, this is good for me to see what four weeks does with this three to five, because my general preference is like six to eight. I feel like those few extra are that push that I kind of need based on the weight selection that I have available, but this is good. Feel super in charge of my form. The right kind of fatigue, muscle fatigue. Perfect. All right, come up. I'm going to take a little twist. I really feel my lats. That's kind of what's going on big for me right now. So I keep track of that. It's a good feeling, but you can tell if you're not careful, those can sometimes get a little spasmy. These for me. All right, guys, set three. Doing good.
Pressing over that chest. Three. Using the pecs to push. Nice job. All right. Grab a wall or a bar. Twist and stretch. Twist and stretch. Okay. Box row. Back into those lats. What do you notice just picking up your weights one side? You should be able to grab and manage hauling one side without any issues in the back because you have that constant core stability. We've trained it to constantly be on the ready. All right. Oh. Ooh, those are getting tougher. Slide it around. Other side. It's crazy how that left side. I know I've mentioned it before, really use that back because I just don't have the power and the arm, strength in the arm, to get the row using the arm. So definitely something to notice. Those weaker sides are forced to use the appropriate muscle groups. All right, let's see. Deadlifts. Or nice and strong. Brace. Oh, flex. There it is. All right. Get those puppies out of the way. Overhead press, overhead pull. Take a little knee up rotation, other side, grab outside, opposite leg, opposite arm. All right. Or engage. Made it. All right. Overhead. Pull. Not sure what your timing is. I'm gonna go ahead and hit a fourth set today. So if you need to skip ahead to the stretch after this, feel free, depending on what your timing is. But if you can hang out, hit a fourth set, please join me. Timing, but then also where your body's at, if your body can take another set. Bye. All right. Here we go. Three dead bugs per side. Two. 
Tuck and tighten, grab deep. Two. And three. <clears throat> All right. Last set for today. Set four. Same thing, three to five reps. Whatever your body has. Feel that chest. Be in control on your drop. Nice. Start to realize why people like to grunt and groan on their heavy days. All right. Box row. When you're ready. my body supported on the box. Okay, second side. Three, four, five. Just keep taking brain to latch to where we're wanting to grab from. Noticing when I pick one up, I want to lean on my thigh. Trying not to do that. Dead lifts. Kind of glad we did both legs on the ground because it's taking too long to split it up. All right. First one counts. Toughest one, picking up that. Truly dead weight <sighs> going from nothing <sighs> to a hundred. Put these guys back. <sighs> Checking them off for today. <laughs> for the week. All right, let's see. I don't know if I'm gonna get five on this round. Being smart, staying safe and healthy. Overhead pull. Low back stays on the ground. Super stay in control. Don't let this run away from you. Arms out wide, put your palms on the ground, cross your right ankle over the left knee, 
and then rotate over. Ooh. Interesting feel. Definitely done. Muscularly. Heart rate stayed super low for training. Rotate in. Tomorrow is our hit day. Make sure you make it. Unless you are cross training and doing your own. I know several of you are getting out for bike rides, swims, runs. It's got to be one of my favorite stretches. All right, after this, we're going to get our trifecta stretch. Roll in. <clears throat> Come on up. Roll it over. Start with your right leg forward, your left leg back. So I hit this sequence at the end of the day as well pretty much without fail, whether I've been moving a lot or sitting a lot. It's a, it's a good one. Seems to keep things running the way that they need to be. Plant into the hands, screw the palms into the ground, pull the elbow pits forward so you're stretching those forearms. Go ahead and curl the back toes under, lift your knee, and let the hips sink a little more. You can even bounce a little. Okay, we're gonna add in a twist, drop your left knee, Drop your left hip out, and then open the right arm back. Lay around with where you put it. You feel the chest, the shoulder, that lat again. Rotate back around. Extend your legs straight so the hips come back pretty much squared off. Toes are up, reaching through the back of the knee toward the ground, and then pull the chest toward the toes. So you're pulling your right hip back, the left hip forward, and then we're gonna take a twist, left hand outside your leg, right hand behind. So just plant into your fingertips, tent your hands, and then twist through that mid back. Rotate back around, take your left, or take your right foot to the left side of the mat, and then pull the toes back for pigeon. Now. My hips are still up. I wanna make sure I'm squared off pelvis to floor. Then if I can keep that square and then lower down, I'll go for it. You can kinda of use your arms, elbows, hands, whatever to help get that squared off hip as well. Feeling good. All right, tuck the back knee in so you end up in your Z-sit. Slide forward. And then go ahead and push up. We're going to hit the other side. Left leg forward, right leg back. Slide forward. Turn your fingertips back toward your back of the mat now. Stretch through the forearms, curl the back toes under, lift up off your knee, let the hip continue to drop, bounce. Okay, drop the knee, plant your right hand, rotate your right hip out to the right, and then the left arm up and back open through the chest. All sorts of different feelings and stretches and sensations here. Just kind of gets you where you need it. Rotate back around, hinge it back. Toes come up, square the hips, so pull your back hip forward. The left hip back, reach the chest toward the toes. Feel like you have some sort of traction, so something's pulling the hip back as you're pulling the chest forward. And then we're gonna take our left foot across to the right side of the mat. 
and then plant down. So I talked about this a whole lot in one of the series that we did because I was in the middle of um, one of my favorite books I've ever read. It's by Seth Godin. It's called The Practice. And it's really getting away from achieving a specific goal, which is not um, how a lot of athletic performances go. But I think it's really important and healthy to take seasons to focus on the practice. Um, I'm reading another book about just presence and stillness and being here now. So when you come to your workouts, when you come to your mat, enjoy the, the practice, the commitment, the presence, the moment. We are committed to showing back up. So there are definitely goals that, you know, occasionally are really fun to work for and achieve, especially when we're in a series like this, we're repeating, we're seeing what our progressive overload can look like. Rotate to that Z-sit. <clears throat> I think it's also important to just recognize you made it. Each and every day that you make it, that you commit to the workout, that you commit to your body, and that you're keeping it healthy and able to come back day after day and feel good for the rest of your day. That's something to be aware of and present with and should feel like success and achievement in and of itself. All right, well, hopefully you were able to stay a little longer with me, and I will see you again tomorrow for our hit session. Have a great day.